Come back. Six. 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 Uh, six. You need to go to Calvary Baptist Church. To where? Calvary Baptist Church on West Main. I mean, or, on Main Street. Already? All right. God is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures forever. We at Calvary Baptist Church praise his name. I'm sure by now you've heard of the disastrous fire which destroyed our sanctuary last Sunday evening after we had all gone to bed, having finished one of the finest worship services we've ever had here at Calvary Baptist. Our other buildings were mercifully spared, though damaged quite heavily in some parts. We are beginning to worship in our family ministry center and we're working with WTVA to be able to televise that worship service live beginning next Sunday. And we look forward to joining you then as you share the worship service with us. Now this morning we would like to share with you last Sunday evening service. Only a couple of hours after that service, this, this church building was engulfed in flame. But that particular worship service was one which meant a great deal to us, our Christmas musical, and I trust God will bless you tremendously through it. Thank you very much.
In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the spirits of God was hovering over the waters. The first reality that ever existed was the light. Before time began, before there were planets and stars, the brilliant glory of his light filled the vastness of space. It was the matchless power of the light that illuminated creation's morn as the Father spoke the worlds into being. He looked at his work and saw that it was perfect. Then, in creation's finest hour, bathed in the warmth and splendor of love's purest light, Earth's firstborn son came into being as man was created in the image of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. Tragically, through deception and disobedience, the children of the light chose darkness over the light. This isn't the kind of darkness that we experience through the hours of the night. This darkness is so intense that it almost has a texture and seems to absorb the light. It seems to. In this darkness, many lose their vision, which is much more tragic than those who lose their sight. Moved by an unbounded love for his children, the Father set into motion the plan to restore the relationship that our rebellion had severed. The time had come to shine the pure radiance of his light into a world that was lost in the darkness of sin. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world.
He came into the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. The glorious light of the world came to us in the stillness of the night. He was a king without a crown, a prince without a palace, a sovereign without a state. Though Bethlehem's manger would cradle the monarch of all the earth, this most royal of all births, the incarnation of Jehovah God himself occurred quietly without ceremony.
entered the world on that first Christmas evening was himself the source of all light throughout the universe. The very star that led to the place where the divine infant lay was shining in the heavens at his command. But the warmest light radiating on the, this, the holiest of nights glowed within the hearts of these two young people, entrusted with the responsibility of loving and nurturing the Father's only begotten Son. They were chosen of the Lord to provide a home where his child would be loved and protected, where he would grow in wisdom and strength. For the grace of God Almighty was upon him. in me to love him patiently I'm so blessed to be your child this my song shall ever be praise is only my
And so the Christ, love's purest light, came, and darkness had no choice but to flee. For you see, darkness cannot exist in the presence of light. But it is not enough that he came into the world. The Christmas story is only complete when the Christ of Christmas enters the hearts of those who respond to his matchless gift of love and forgiveness. said, I have come into the world as a light, so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ.
Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and the thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. The sun will no more be your light by day, nor will the brightness of the moon shine on you. For the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. His word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. The Lord is my light. If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. The Lord is my light. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Jesus said, you are going to have the light just a little while longer. Walk while you have the light before you, before darkness overtakes you. Put your trust in the light while you have it, so that you may become children of the light. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The Word became flesh and lived for a while among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth.
And God said, let there be light. And there was light. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shined in the darkness, and the darkness was not able to overcome it. He said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me does not walk in darkness, but has the light of life. Now, the critical question this moment is, do you have that light? Do you have that life? Or do you yet sit in darkness? I pray that during this very moment you will ask yourself that question, that you will allow the Spirit of Christ to so illuminate the darkness of your heart and the darkness of your mind that you may see yourself before him as you really are and know whether or not it is that you have truly by faith looked up to see him in the light of glory, high and lifted up, dying in your place for your sin. This very evening, by faith, you need to come to him. Have you done that? I pray before you leave tonight into the darkness, the physical darkness of the world, that you would have found the light that will never go out in your heart. Let's pray together. Father, we do thank you for the testimony of love's pure light, for the music that we've heard tonight, and we pray that this testimony would reverberate again and again in our breasts as we leave this place. Of the Savior who is light, the one who is life, and the one who came to save us. We thank you for this. In Jesus' name, amen. We do appreciate you coming and worshiping with us tonight. And after our orchestra plays their finale, our service will be concluded. Thank you.